The Nike Jumbo Legend boots have been around since 1984, so for ages, basically. And in today's video, I've decided to take a trip down memory lane and take a look at all of the Nike Jumbo Legend boots that have been around since 2005. And to help me out, I'm actually calling up right now Colin Eder, who's the Senior Director for Global Football Footwear at Nike. All right, so Colin, as we always do, we're here to talk a little bit of, well, boots, but also boot history. Um, obviously, this is the 10th generation of the Jimbo Legend. There are nine generations before it. And I know, obviously, the Jimbo it goes way back, early 80s. Uh, the big moment was in 94 with the Jimbo Premier, the World Cup in the US. The Jimbo Legend also kind of took the Jimbo in a new direction. Yeah, so Legend 1, right? We've got it right here. Um, I think for this one, you know, Jay, what what stands out to me is that this was Nike's first time to kind of modernize the like the, the traditional leather boot, right? So you can see some of the modern materials used on the sole plate, right? But also Zoom Air was in this product. I think sometimes people forget this was where uh, Zoom Air, you know, came into the Legend franchise, um, and it just like craftsmanship mixed with that Zoom Air and that and, and those modern material cues. Uh, created you know a pretty iconic start to a, a storage franchise after the the Chimpo premiere 94 a lot of years went by where the Chimpo went from being the super super um exciting board we saw it on the on the feet of all the top players then mercurial kind of came take over as soon total 90 came and and at that point the Chimpo premiere was just a little bit of a maybe seen as a boring training board you know so yeah. it also kind of needed that refresh that yeah. that um, the ATM book came and, and brought about. But the thing is that, you know, the first Legend was so good that on the Legend 2s, you did some tweaks, but it wasn't all that big of a, of a change, was it? No, no, you're exactly right. It was like very small modifications and adjustments. So same tooling, right? Some of the, the, that, the same tooling, same modifications on like kind of some of the materials that you see there. Ever so slight, you know, adjustments into that tongue. Um, still keeping zoom, but it was really just about slightly adjusting what was already a really iconic boot. It kind of feels a little bit more like a one and a half, you know, turns than a, than a two, if we're being honest. But I think, the, you know, there was a good thing going with the one. And so, and, and there was such good adoption from athletes um, that there wasn't a giant need to really move this on too much further than, than, than what the one already had. And then the threes came about. Um, now, obviously, there were two models of the threes. There was a, the, the, the regular one, so to speak. And there was also the three Elite. That was in the age of uh, the Elite boots with carbon fiber toolings and all that stuff. But the Elite also did something else other than the carbon tooling. I've got the Elite right here, Jay. And this one is special to me because I worked on this back in the day. So oh, this you is did? one of the wow. boots, yeah, that I spent some time on. Um, and you're right. I think, you know, this used kangaroo leather, but it started to bring in Kangalite. Right, it started to bring in that synthetic material into the back half of the boot, you know, to kind of modernize it to save on some weight, um, which was important. Um, but it started to bring some more modern materials into the upper, right? But to push on even from the one and the two from modern materials on the outsole, I mean, carbon fiber into Tiempo. To me, that's probably the, the most memorable thing about the three. Um, is we brought that lightweight outsole, you know, which was sometimes always reserved for Mercurial into Tiempo. I think that really kind of shocked and made Tiempo lovers pretty proud. And the ones and twos were heavy, you know, especially yes. in, in, by today's standards, right? So, so giving people that um, alternative with a lightweight option of the Lady, that was that was pretty interesting and a kind of light. And then something that's that's special to me. The Jumbo Legend 4, um, you have the regular one on the table. I have the four elites in my hands. Now, obviously, uh, the Legend 4s are brilliant boots, actually. Uh, you know, super soft um, kangaroo leather up. You have this very nice foam package as well. So it's really lovely, dampened around the foot, a little bit of quilting on the forefoot, very, very like traditional Legend styling, so to speak. But what you did with the Elite was just to me at least, next level. Uh, super, super thin leather package. Some of the softest leather I can think of on a legend. Uh, fly wire, carbon fiber tooling, and it even had the like the, the actual sizing as a, as a number on the, um, on the, on the tongue, which is 
It would just, it just scream craftsmanship, right? You nailed it. I mean, you just got me excited about this boot. It's, it, to me, the only thing I'll add or emphasize that you already said there, Jay, is just that I think from all the previous tempos, the vamp and the softness, the butteriness that you get, it was was better than anything we had ever done. It was re it's really, it was really phenomenal. That was the hero for me, was just how soft and supple that vamp was. Then we move forward a bit more because we arrive at the Chimbo Legend 5. And that was a bit of a, should we say, a, I don't want to say departure from all the classic way of building Chimbos, but it just brought in even more new technology. I agree. I mean, to me, what was really impressive about this boot was that we started to do some crazy things with mesh when you started to talk about like hypervenom, right? Yeah. And I think we started to learn from that a lot uh, and bring in kangaroo leather mixed with mesh. And it just got us this quilted vamp um, that, that just, you know, gave a new appeal, right? We talk about softness that, that you, you know, that we mentioned in the, in the, in the four, but this, this just started to bring another level of just like craftsmanship through the quilting and through that mesh and that leather. And then Hyper Shield, of course, uh, you know, that, that just took that whole, obviously ACC was introduced um, on the four. The Jimbo has been pushing, um, you know, a reduced water uptake for many, many years, all the way back to like the early, what, 80s, I think they, they still started to work with that. But, but you know, Hyper Shield was just the next level of that. And, and the combination of this super, super soft leather full foot, uh, ACC Hyper Shield, that really flexible tooling in the forefoot. And I think the blocking on that launch colorway yeah. is just phenomenal as well. Oh, those are great points. The blocking too. It was actually really hard, Jay. I even remember because I was on the team when we were working on this to get the block right here where we uh -huh. were trying to color the kangaroo leather to match with the Kangalite was actually really, really hard to do. I can imagine, yeah. Just let me let me ask you a question since you were working on this one back in the day. Did you ever think that you would do like a full synthetic leather chimbo at some point in the future? You can be honest. Not back then, right? I think not no. back then because I just think, you know, there was, once you, you we just been using kangaroo leather for so long, it became, you know, such an important piece of the whole football line that you needed to have. But what's crazy, Jay, is that like this team innovates, right? And yeah. you know, continue to push and find new ways through materials and methods of make. We also had then after that the um, Jumbo Legend Six. Yeah. Again, they had this really low pointy uh, toolbox. Uh, it had that that the feel of the skeleton underneath uh, the leather. Obviously, fewer stitches to 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 make sure that it it had less of these really hard spots um, where you can press the leather as you stitch it, but also to have less water uptake, obviously. And, and just, you know, giving that sensation of having a really untouched leather upper, but with the structure from that um, skeleton right underneath, that foam skeleton there. Yeah, I look at that one in your hand, Jay. I think about just like how modern that that vamp is, right? Every other tempo that came before, there were so many, so many stitches and things like that, and just how the team was able to create kangaroo leather, but through a modern, a more modern interpretation. There was was really impressive. What was also interesting was the Legend Seven. Yep, this actually ended up being the lightest tempo we had made to date. Yes. Right. So there was a lot. I think this is probably as you look at all the different tempos and how innovative they were. This one had the most you know, unique, innovative pieces all combined. So you mentioned the vamp, you mentioned how we just had the kind of vacuum seal with different materials to create that sleek and modern look. Flyknit, right? So the first time we really brought Flyknit into Tiempo. Sure, um, sure. Still to this day, I think people rave about how this fit and felt. Um, and then you start to talk about lightweight plates. So we, yes, we did carbon fiber, but here, you know, with, with, with a BZM plate, you know, for much less expense than carbon fiber, we were able to deliver a really lightweight, you know, flex, flexible plate. And you put all those pieces together and, and you had the most lightest, you know, the lightest tempo that we had made today, which is pretty, pretty impressive. And also this, this kickstarted things with, with fit mesh. It almost acted like a seat belt uh, for your foot uh, that was soft whenever you, you you didn't apply pressure, you were just running around. But as you then put down your foot, uh, switch direction, change direction, it hardened up and, and really kept your foot in place. Um, the funny thing is that, that the hyper stability plate was so good that uh, you just you just kept it <laughs> for the aid. Um, but, but on the aid, obviously you also kept then 
it, it became more than fitness, uh, fit mesh. It became quad fit mesh uh, at that point. Still had that working underneath the forefoot. Uh, still had a fly knit, was it called a fly knit tunnel, yeah. uh, which wrapped all the way uh, around the foot, even inside the ball. And then you had this big, big, completely stitchless kangaroo leather piece. Listen, all these boots have been really, really good. I think that one, we were bringing a lot of different things into it and we're really trying to obsess comfort through that kind of the tunnel mesh that you were talking about all the way through the heel. Mm -hmm. I think it ended up delivering on comfort, but let's just be honest. I think where it fell short is it became a little bit overbuilt, right? So yeah. It became a little bit too much of a boot. Uh, and in our attempt to kind of drive comfort home, we kind of lost some sleekness uh, and lost some of the kind of like more modern, you know, appeal that we needed to have. But it delivers on comfort, delivers on softness, it delivers yeah. on oh, a lot yeah. of the things that Tiempo needs. Um, but I think some good lessons were learned with that one as well. But the nines kind of went... I don't want to say it went back to, mm -hmm. to the roots, but it kind of took a, a, a new direction again, or a familiar direction. Um, ended up being a little bit more, is it fair to call it firm and padded and, and slightly more uh, plush with the feeling of the older Legends, what that gave that really cozy slipper-like sensation, but with a modern application. I think you're spot on, Jay. I mean, I do oh, think this, I mean, all the ones we talked about that were kind of, pretty impressive like individ individual innovations within each one, right? Different things. And I think I think this one was going back to a very traditional, you know, kangaroo leather build. The team was able to get some good padding by adding some padding, mixing with the kangaroo leather, keeping some of the, the this, this micro texture, right? Uh, that we, we've, we've popped up in other silos and other places in the past, but to bring that to Tiempo was pretty unique. Probably a good one for us to end on when it, when it came to, uh, when it came to kangaroo leather. Yeah, because because that's kind of the thing. Now this whole, I think it's fair to call it a legacy of leather chambos has ended for now. Who knows, maybe for good. But, but you know, it started all the way back in the 80s, 30 years later, 40, 40 years later. Um, quick maths and all. It is like, what's it like being a part of, you know, closing the door on the chambo leather legacy? Sounds yeah. dramatic, you know, but <laughs> no, no it is like. though, right? Because it's been part of our, it's been part of football boots and Nike football boots for so long. The reality is, is we just went through all these tiempos right here. They're all great, but they're also all very similar, right? Mm. And I think the reason why they're all similar is because kangaroo leather was a staple within all of them, right? And there's only so much that you can do from a performance and style element when it comes to kangaroo leather. Can we take all the amazing things that kangaroo leather provides and make them make them better, make them that much better. And that's what the team set out to do through that lens of performance and style. And that's what we have Fly Touch. And Fly Touch is obviously we've made a, a deep dive with uh, with Odie that we're gonna we're gonna show at a later point. Um but just quickly take us through what what why is Fly Touch and Fly Touch Plus especially so brilliant. We mentioned some of the things that are the drawbacks from kangaroo leather, right? And so Fly Touch addresses all of those. So to start with it is soft and it molds to your foot. We've actually measured it in the lab and it actually is softer than kangaroo leather in the lab. Then it has 55% less water uptake than kangaroo leather. That's a ton. If you think about how much football is played in wet conditions and if that kangaroo leather boot is, you know, like a sponge sucking up yeah. water, 55% uh, less intake from a, from a water intake on fly touch is huge. It does not overstretch, right? Um, it ends up being the lightest tempo that we've ever made. A lot of that due to the fact that Fly Touch is lighter than kangaroo leather, um, and it's it's gonna ha it's gonna last longer. It has less durability concerns and durability issues. So you're getting that lovely fit, that amazing like out of the box step in comfort, but then you're gonna have something that's going to last for a longer period of time and really you know more you know live with the more modern demands of the game, right? How do you see the future for Chiembo? You know, obviously you can't reveal it all, but will it still be around in 10 years time? That's a great question. I think, you know, we have been pushing with Mercurial, pushing with Phantom, and the time just came where we needed to push with Tiempo, right? So for the future, you know, using Fly Touch now, I think we've opened a door and unlocked some creative possibilities that we never had with Tiempo. 
you know, Tiempo has grown, I think, with the athlete along the way, and in doing so, it maybe hadn't always appealed to more, the, the younger generation of consumers, right? And I think because it's now more modern, because it can have more graphics and color, I think it's gonna start to become a shoe that we're gonna really stand beside and stand up next to Mercurial, next to Phantom, and how it can have an expression of style, but then also a modern build from a performance standpoint. Right, that was a good answer. Uh, and let's catch up on that in, in 10 years time, shall we? When there is even more legends to, uh, to go through. Uh, Colin, you are also a legend. Thank you so much for your time. And of course, guys and girls, if you are interested in the new Jumbo Legend 10, you can of course check it out in the link to you spot right over there. Tell us what you think of the overall history of the Jumbo Legend. Make it your favorite in the comment section right down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel with the notifications on if you haven't done so already. And with those words, Colin and I will be signing off. Cheerio.